Just, mm, just go. And we want to. Hmm, okay. We want to just journey to the place where no flesh can glory. If you are Nemo Aliate, Jove and Temona, they come by the vessel. Belevena, you Jeffe, Suzeveke, Malile Bocasa, Seville, Comprese. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me beside still waters. In the midst of all the trouble, being the shepherd that he is, he leads me beside still waters. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me beside still waters. Just meditate on him. Meditate on him. Meditate on him. Meditate on him. Venima me jola. Kote zule mi te vige le tori anje. Hmm. Yeda masazile. Kampres o vize zai. Veskompe jelami. Spirit, lead me where my trust is with the borders, and we walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my fate will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Hey. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. Now my fate would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me. Oh, 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 oh. Aya. 
Yedema Sazile, Compress of Visezai, Vescompe Gelami. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. If you can hear me, kindly unmute your microphone and give me feedback from you. And God bless you so much. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for another night. Tonight has been quite a challenging one. I was just talking to the speaker. Um, MTN has decided to take their, their data, but God is still in control. We'll be able to run tonight's show. Uh, we'll be able to run tonight's event to the glory of God. Tonight happens to be the, the fourth night of our lecture series on the Christian faith. And um, the past three days has been a lot of teachings and doctrine and uh, I would entreat each and every one of you to visit the YouTube channel and take some time to go through the the things we've discussed so far because it forms the foundation of our very faith and I pray that God will give us the understanding the spirit to imbibe what he's teaching through the minister and his servants without taking much of the time I would invite a man of God pastor set up amen to take over the platform Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, I believe you can hear me very well. Hallelujah. Amen. Kindly respond from your end so we can get some feedback. God bless you. Um, I'm seeing Minister Dennis on the platform. Please, can you hear me? Equia is on the platform. Can you please hear me? I want to be very much sure that we can all hear, then I can proceed. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I think... Um, Equia has responded. Minister Denise, are you there? I'm probably sure he's having some struggles with the network. How be it, you go straight into the word of God for tonight. You go straight into the word of God for tonight. Um, Doc, I believe you can hear me. Yes, please, I can. Okay, wow. Uh, Minister Dennis, can you please hear me? Yes, please, I can hear you. Wow, it's good to have you here, sir. It's good to be here myself. Wow. I'm honored to get to, to enjoy from, from, your, from your message. It is well. It is well. 
Um, I'm seeing Ikuya, yeah, I'm seeing Charlotte also joining. Charlotte, you are very much welcome. Um, today is the fourth night for this very program. Eight solid days. We are believing God for this season to be a very transform transforming one. And um, God himself is going to shape our reasoning in his word, in prayer. And of course, there will be manifestations to whatever God is implanting in our hearts in this very season. Doc, once again, thank you so much for responding to the inspiration and the direction of the Holy Spirit in putting this meeting together. The, the investment that has gone into it, I do pray that God himself would replenish everything that you have lost in putting this meeting together. And the same applies to all of us on this very platform at the moment, for those of us on Zoom, for those of us on YouTube, any investment that you have made, any expectation that you have, may God himself respond to your expectation according to his will. In Jesus' amen. precious name, amen. Hallelujah. Eternal Father, give us light, give us light, give us light. You are the one who dwelleth in light. Give us light tonight. Enlighten our darkness. Enlighten our darkness. Enlighten our darkness. We do not want to be like the church in the book of Revelation that claimed that they can see. But you entreated them that they buy of you and I salve that they might see for they were blind. We do not want to presume that we see, but we come unto you and we declare that we are infirmed. We declare that we are insufficient of our own. We pray that, Father, you give us light. You give us light. You give us light. In Jesus' precious name, let the saints shout a resounding amen. Amen. Now, yesterday we began, yesterday we began the doctrine of man, the doctrine of man. Now, I, I didn't want to use theological terminologies um, because when you go into theology, the doctrine of man is actually called anthropology. Yeah, it's actually called anthropology, but I just didn't want to go into theological terminologies. That's why instead we are looking at the doctrine of man. And I'm very much sure that yesterday a lot of questions were raised on your mind. How be it? I know that God himself ignited your spirit through the words that he spoke through my vocal cords. And tonight we are believing him that it is not going to be any different, but in a very higher dimension in Jesus' precious name. Now, yesterday I said that we were going to talk about the design and operation of man. Because we started the doctrine of man, we must do well to delve deeper into it and try to understand God's intent for the creation of man. And that was what we started yesterday. And yesterday we got to know that in the hierarchy, in the hierarchy of um, God's own placement or patterns, we realize that the Godhead is at the pinnacle, followed by man, even before angels. That is a more reason why some of the angels didn't even understand why God is so mindful of man and why God visited man so much. Having looked at God's architectural design of the creation and the placement of all the heavenly bodies and them, how God put the created order together, it's about for them as to why God showed so much interest in man and um, by the grace of god we unraveled a part of that yesterday and we looked at the composition of man that man is spirit soul body man is spirit soul body and i believe that that was a part probably that sets you so much into thinking but looking at the references i gave you yesterday i believe that if you are really a bereaved and a studious person in the faith by now you would have reached a conclusion to know that really what you were speaking yesterday was the very mind of god hallelujah the Lord. So in going deeper in going deeper into the design and the operation of man now remember yesterday we talked about the fact that Genesis 1 26, where it says, and God said, let us make man. We said the word God there is Elohim, meaning it was a council of personas. It was a council 
of entities. That is what we call the Trinity. So the Godhead said, let us make man in our image. In other words, the man was to be made in the image of the Godhead. And the very next verse says, and God created man in his image. That word God there is Elohim. So the man who was supposed to be made in the image of the Godhead, Bible says that God created that man in his image. And we talked about the fact that when we talk about the image, you are looking at the representation or the definition of God. Because God himself is a spirit. And I brought in a little bit of science yesterday for us to understand what it means to say image. And if you remember, we said that if you are talking about image scientifically, as long as there is an image, it means that there pre-exists an object. If there is no object, there cannot be an image. So when an object stands in front of a mirror, that which is seen in the mirror is the image. And we see the image because of the object. Hallelujah. But Amen. in the case where we are dealing with a God who Bible says is spirit, God is spirit. In other words, in the book of Colossians chapter number one, I think verse 15 now was Bible talks about the fact that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So if God is invisible and God is standing next to you right now that I speak to you, God, we know that God is everywhere. So if God is standing next to you and you are standing in the mirror, you are not going to see God in the mirror. Hallelujah. Which means that Amen. the image that is being talked about here is not a scientific image picture or imagery that we have in our minds. Rather, it is a spiritual, it has a spiritual connotation and we must unravel the meaning in that line. So we got to know that when you talk about the image, you are looking at the representation and definition of God. So when God said that, let us make man in our image, he was looking at a man who would give definition of visibility to him in a physical created realm. Hallelujah. Now, that was what we arrived at yesterday and we went further. But today, looking at the design and operation of man, it is quite needful for me to talk about the fact that Adam who was created in the garden and was placed, who was created, sorry, and was placed in the garden was not God's original intent for man. When Bible talks about the fact that, or when God talks about the fact that let us make man in our image, God's focus was not Adam. Hallelujah. Because God needed a man that was to give him visibility, a man that was to represent him to the very highest point, a man that was to represent him 100% without any misrepresentations and limitations. But we see from the very um, go that Adam had to misrepresent God because Adam lacked something. And that is quite important. And the reason why we want to talk about the design and the oppression of man. So in all of creation, remember yesterday, I'm trying to get a recap of what we did yesterday so that you get the foundation that we can build upon it. Now, we talked about the fact that since the creation of the world, there has only been the existence of two men. That is Adam and Jesus. Jesus or Adam and Christ. It's about two men, the first Adam and the second man. They are not the same. Hallelujah. Talking about the first Adam, he spoke concerning um, the normal Adam we know, but speaking of the second man, he spoke concerning Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, the design of man. The oppression of man. In the Greek, whenever we talk about the word man, in the Hebrew, it is Adam on the context in which it is used. I am repeating. In the Greek, when you talk about man, it depends on the context in which man is used. For example, we can make mention of the word man and it might be used in the angle of gender. I repeat, 
when we make mention of the word man, it can sometimes be used in the angle of gender. For example, when Angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, Mary, he said that you are going to conceive and you shall give birth to a son and he shall be the son of the highest. Then Mary asks the question, how is this going to be seeing that I know no man? The word man there in the Greek is the word ane, ane, E-A-N-E-R, ane, which means a husband or a male figure. So Mary was telling the angel that I don't have a husband or I, there is no male figure that I am glued to at this very point in time or I am married to that is going to make this a possibility. That was the word ane, but he said man. Now it is quite needful because when you are reading scripture and you don't know where the terminologies being used are gender related or generic used, you might misinterpret scripture. Now, sometimes when we use the word man, we are using it as a generic term. When I say a generic term, for those of us on this platform, I believe we do understand we are students. We are looking at the general usage of the word man. For example, a woman is a man. In the beginning, the Bible said, let us make man in our image. The next verse says, and God created man in his image. Male and female created he them. So we see the word man used in the position of male and female. Are we together? That is the generic use of the word man. So when I'm talking about the design and operation of man, I'm not talking about its gender usage. Rather, I'm talking about its generic usage. So when God created the male and female and called them man, what was God's design for that man? What was God's plan of operation for that man? Hallelujah. Mm. Now, uh, the teachings of Jesus. Remember that everything we are talking about as the things that are most surely believed among us are the things Jesus taught and he did. Per the teachings of Jesus, we will see him communicate about the design and the operation of man as was put in place by the Godhead. By the time we are done with Hallelujah. Please are we together? I want us to I want to be sure that everybody is following me. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Good. The network is misbehaving, but Jesus is still Lord. Amen. Mm, the network is really misbehaving, but whatever be the case, we are still going to delve into the word so i was saying that by the time we are done i believe you can hear me by the time you are done you are you personally are going to assess yourself or you are going to know whether you are operating according to divine design whether i the one ministering i am operating according to divine design and Jesus was the only man who came to show us how man was designed to operate. I repeat, Jesus was the only man who came to teach humanity how man was designed to operate. No other man was able to give us that design. Of course, in the Old Testament, we see men who give us pictures or shadows of how God designed man to operate. But unfortunately for them, they were imperfect patterns. Hallelujah. 
they were imperfect patterns because at a point in time they could walk according to divine design and at other points in their life also they could misrepresent the design and the operations of god let me give you an example a man like abraham it is written in the book of hebrews chapter number 10 verse 38 bible says the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith. We see Jesus in the Gospels tell his disciples, Oh, ye of little faith, for how long will I be with you? In other words, Jesus is telling them that I am a man that operates by faith, but you guys are walking around me and it looks like you are a bag of faithlessness and you are a bag of fearfulness. Hallelujah. So he will tell them, oh, ye of little faith. Bible says sometimes he rebuked them. Oh, ye of little faith. Because he knew that the just shall live by faith. And we say Abraham is the father of faith. But this same Abraham, who is the father of faith, who received the word that within the lineage of a very son, God shall what? Make him the father of many nations. This man responded to the pressure of the wife and went away from divine design. And he created a different group of people who have a different belief even in our day. I call it the error of the chosen. Mm. Are we together? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we can speak well of Abraham, but in other ways, mm -hmm. or on the other hand, there are things too that we can say concerning Abraham that didn't really speak according to divine design. That is why Jesus is the only man who came to teach us how man was supposed and designed to live. Irrespective of the great people that we have in the Old Testament, Elijah, Isaiah, and all of those people, all of them were patterns, but they were imperfect patterns. Jesus is the only virtuous pattern that has been given to us. That is why the Bible talks about the fact that we have been called that we might be conformed to the image of his son. God never calls any man to be conformed to the image of Elijah. He didn't call any man to be conformed to the image of Jeremiah. He didn't call any man to be conformed to the image of David. But remember, God spoke concerning David that he has found a man after his own heart. And this man will be the man who will do his will. Irrespective of the testimony of God concerning David, you and I are not supposed to be conformed to the image of David. Rather, we are supposed to be conformed form to the image of the Christ because he is God's ultimate man who comes to show us how man was designed and how man is supposed to operate. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I believe we are together. So the design and operation of man. Now there were things Jesus said that brought to our mind the design or God's design of man and how God purposed man to operate. Where do we see some of these things? Let me show you. In fact, I have a lot of things by the grace of God here tonight. And I don't know if you'll be able to go through all of them. If you are not, probably this session is going to be two. So you have to postpone the rest to God willing tomorrow. However be the case, let's just believe God to just flow. Wherever the Lord leads us, we are going to go. Now, in the Gospels, we see Jesus bring up a certain subject. And that subject was intended to communicate to us the operation of man and how God designed man to function. Where do we see this? Let's go to the book of Luke. I need you to have your Bible. It's very important that you have your Bible. Very, very critical. Luke, chapter number four. Book of Luke, chapter number four. Halamilo Setile. Verse four. Now, Luke chapter number four, verse four. This is the account. This is the account. We looked at this yesterday, but yesterday we went in a different direction from this very scripture. But today we are believing God to go in a different direction also. Luke chapter four, verse four says, and Jesus answered him saying, now this was the temptation of the devil. 
And Jesus answered him saying, at this point, the devil has asked him, if you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. If you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. He asked, was he asking Jesus, you, you, Jesus, if you say you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. All of a sudden, Jesus started talking about man. And we went into that yesterday because we realized that the first man God created, according to Luke chapter number three, verse 38, was intended to be the son of God. So man, who is Adam or Adam, was intended to be the son of God and he was supposed to function and give representation to God in a visible realm, having our source life from an invisible realm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now, please fo follow me because we are going, we are going somewhere. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Here, Jesus was giving us a design that has been weaved into this artifact called man. What is this design? Remember, you're talking about man. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So Jesus is saying that if you are talking about man, at this point that I am in the wilderness and I am hungered because I have been on a journey of 40 days and 40 nights, having eaten nothing. I want to reply you, the enemy, to tell you that according to my design as a man or according to God's design for man, it has been weaved into man a certain operation. And that operation is this, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So according to God's design of you listening to me, according to God's plan for you listening to me, if only you are a man, you have been designed and wired to live not on bread alone, but on the proceeding word of God. Hallelujah. Now, just follow me. This statement we just read in Luke chapter number 4, verse 4, Jesus was quoting from Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse 3. So, I need you to go with me to Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse 3. Deuteronomy 8, 3. Huh. Deuteronomy 8, 3. Maybe let me start from verse 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. This is Moses writing for the people of Israel because Moses was not going into the land. So he was writing commandments and precepts for them that was going to guide them in taking the land that God had promised the children of Israel. That is the book of Deuteronomy. So Deuteronomy chapter number 8 verse 1, Bible says, And all the commandments which I have commanded thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Verse 2, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness. Watch that one, forty years in the wilderness. Why? He says, to humble you and to prove you and to know what was in thine heart. Whether thou wouldest keep his commandment or no. Watch the verse 3. It was this, from this verse 3 that Jesus quoted the answer for the enemy. He said, and he humbled thee. Now, please note this. This is Moses giving an account because Moses was on the ground. In fact, he was an eyewitness. Moses was the one they heckled when they were hungry. And the story to this is found in the book of Exodus chapter number 16. Exodus chapter number 16. The people were hungry. 
because they had gone three days without water and they came to a place called Mara and they found water and the water was bitter. And according to the directive of God, Moses cut a tree and placed it in the, to the water and the water became sweet and the people drank. And the people walked on the strength of that water from Elim, even in the wilderness of sin. S-I-N. I'm not talking about sin like iniquity. I'm talking about sin as a location. So in the wilderness of sin, the Bible said that the children of Israel, we, they, they were murmuring against Moses and Aaron. And they were heckling them in word because these people were hungry. That is the backstory of what you are reading in Deuteronomy chapter number 8. And Moses, who was the one who was their leader, is saying in the verse 3, and God humbled you and suffered you to hunger. So when you were hungry, God knew it. God was very much aware that the children of Israel, you were hungry. And it was God's intent to do that because God was trying to humble you and feed you with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did your fathers know. That he, watch the next statement. Why did God do that? That he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only. So it means that when they were in the wilderness and they were remembering against Moses, it was actually God who had taken them on a course. And the cause was to bring them to a place for them to acknowledge that their existence and their living was not on the premise of bread alone. Are we together? Hallelujah. Is somebody here? Amen. Is somebody here? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why I said by the time you finish, you know whether you are operating according to divine design as a man. Because by the time you realize, you 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 will know for yourself that you are not operating as the man God designed you to be. So while these people were hungry in the wilderness and they were angry at Moses and they were murmuring, it was God who was trying to prove them and to bring them to a place of knowledge where they would know that their existence was not on the premise or the strength of bread only. Rather, the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that was the scripture Jesus quoted in his defense on the day of his temptation, having fasted for 40 days, 40 nights. Because for 40 days, 40 nights, the Bible records that he was hungry. The enemy came to him and said, Turn this stone into bread. And he tells him, I know, I know, man shall not live by bread alone. Do you know what Jesus was saying? Jesus was saying that I am aware of the fact that God proves his people at a point in time for them to know that even when they are hanged, their existence is not on the presence of bread, rather the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. As you are listening to me right now, what word are you living your life on that has proceeded from the mouth of God? If you are not living on the word that has proceeded from the mouth of God, but you are living on the strength of bread, then you are not operating according to divine design as a man hallelujah you are listening to me and um, the strength of your life is in bread the strength of your life is in bread I'm not saying bread is wrong because even Jesus himself, he ate. But he knew that there were times man was not supposed to live on the strength of bread alone. Man was supposed to live on the strength of the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That is a man living according to divine design. But the children of Israel in Exodus 16, these guys were not aware. Have you realized, if you read in the book of Exodus chapter number 16, you realize, as they murmured, Moses didn't murmur. Moses, Moses sorry, was not murmuring. Moses was very okay with God. Moses was the one who for 40 days and 40 nights was in the presence of God, and there was no hunger that dictated for his body. He was not hungry. 
in the presence of the Lord, he was receiving the preceding words of God. And even at this point in time, in Exodus chapter number 16, when the children of Israel were angry, Moses was hearing God because God told him that by night they would eat flesh and in the morning they are going to eat bread that I am going to rain upon them from heaven. So them that were murmuring because they had their strength in bread, they had no proceeding word. But there was another man in the person of Moses who was not murmuring about bread, but he was concerned about the proceeding word of God. And as they murmured, he had the proceeding word of God. If you are listening to me as a man who has a soul, who has a spirit, who has a body, I am talking to you that according to divine design, you don't live your life only on the premise of bread. You live on your you live your life on the vehicle of the proceeding word of God. Hallelujah. Alima kofeli tal fendo sheli ka kosai telula ilampeli to vreseso. So according to God's design, you were to operate as a man on the proceeding word, on the proceeding word of God. The word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let me show you a man who lived on the proceeding word of God. In the book of Luke, chapter number two. Hmm. Luke. Chapter number two, we see a man come into the temple at the dedication of baby Jesus. And this man is called Simon or Simon or however you would want to pronounce it, depending on the school you attended. Hallelujah. Luke chapter two, verse 25. I'm reading all the way to verse 33. It says, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Let's pause there. This man, Simeon, was waiting for something. This man, Simeon, was in expectation of something. What was he in expectation of? He was in an expectation of the consolation of Israel. Why was he in expectation? To watch the next statement. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. How did he know that there was something called the consolation of Israel? Look at verse 26. It says, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he has seen the Lord's Christ. This is a man in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant who was living on a proceeding way. God had spoken to him of the consolation of Israel and the consolation of Israel was what he was waiting for. And when they brought baby Jesus into the temple, he took him into his arms and began to speak by the spirit. This man was pre-informed. He had information beyond time. This is a man who was operating according to divine design. He understood the design and the operation of man, that man would only live by the way that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And we don't know the number of people who were waiting for the consolation of Israel and it was revealed to them. But at least we know of a man called Simeon who was under the law and this man was pre-informed. He had information ahead of time. He had spiritual intelligence of of the fact that there will be the consolation of Israel. There will be one who will be called the Christ, who will bring salvation, and he will be the light unto the Gentiles. And this man's existence, or this Christ's coming, shall be for the rise and the fall of many. And he even spoke concerning Mary and said, even you, Mary, a sword shall pierce through your heart because of that which your son is about to do. This is a man who lives on the premise of the preceding word of God. As you are listening to me, what word of God have you received for the next three years of your life? What word of God have you received for the next month ahead of you? What word of God have you received for just God willing tomorrow? What word of God do you have concerning the path that the Lord has destined for you to walk in? If you do not have such a word and if you have no idea as to what you are about to do, what the Lord is about to do, then I'm telling Telling you, you are not operating as a man as designed by God. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. So we see Simon. He has intelligence. He is informed ahead of time. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he has seen the lost guy. So, <laughs> this man even knew he was very much aware that nothing could kill him until he has seen the lost Christ. As you are listening to me, you are probably might not be so sure of when you are going to depart this earth, but I'm looking at a man. The man had intelligence that there was no way he was going to die tomorrow. There was no way he was going to die the day after tomorrow. But he knew that the only signal that comes to inform him of his death is when he sees the Lord Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And he went further to say, and he came by the Spirit. Have you seen? He, he, came, he came by the Spirit. This is a man who is living on the preceding word, not only on bread. Oh, we are eating all the time. We are eating all the time. Uh, it is all about what we can eat. No, 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 no. The Bible says, Jesus said that man, 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 as he was designed by God, was not designed to live on bread alone, but by the preceding word of God. If I, when you check the book of Exodus, sorry, when you check the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verse 3, you will realize that the word man shall not live. The word live there means to keep alive, which means man shall not be keep, kept sorry, alive by bread alone. Rather, man shall be kept alive by the preceding word that comes from the Lord. Man shall be revived by the preceding word that comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why we cannot be giving to bread. We cannot just give our lives to bread. Everything is about what we can eat. Everything is about how our tummies can be filled. No, 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 no. Let me even show you another person. Another woman called Anna. Anna, the prophetess. In the same Luke chapter number 2, verse 36 to 38, the Bible says that this, man, this woman was a widow, about 84 years, and he was a widow. And all the time he was in the temple serving the Lord with fastings and with prayer this is a widow serving the lord with fastings and with prayer this is a woman who was functioning according to divine design at a point in time jesus told his disciples that you guys could not cast out the evil spirit because this kind goeth not except by prayer and fasting you disciples you want to cast out devils but you don't want to give yourself to prayer and fasting you want to cast out devils you want to heal the sick you want to raise the dead but you cannot give yourself to prayer and fasting you do not want to go through the motions of god's design of man you do not want to go through the motions of how god has designed man to operate yet you want to get the result of the man that God has designed to function in a certain way and Jesus tells them it does not work like that he said this kind goeth not except by prayer and by fasting this kind goeth not except by the preceding word of God that you have I came to announce to somebody here tonight that your life does not exist in the abundance of bread that you have given yourself to it does not exist in your over-reliance on bread. Hey, how much more are you going to rely on the preceding word of God that ye might live? And that is what I came to sound to you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. That it is about time that you came back to original design that God designed you to be. To say, man shall not live by bread alone. Like he said in the book of Exodus, I sent them there so that I will prove them and I will humble them for them to know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word out of the mouth of God. 
and you might be listening to me wherever you are you might be listening to me you don't know that everything that god is doing is to teach you his design and his operation you might be looking forward to a certain breakthrough in finances you might be looking forward to a certain breakthrough in employment and you are not getting it i came to announce to you that probably god is trying to teach you according to divine design how you are supposed to operate but because you have not realized it you are still in a place where you don't see your right from your left hmm. hallelujah amen Man shall not live by bread alone. You are looking for bread. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew chapter number six, this in fact, Matthew chapter number six, verse 30. That was he talks about the fact that be anxious for nothing, be anxious, be anxious for nothing. Take no thought for what you are going to eat. You are listening to me. Everything about you is what you are going to eat, what you are going to wear. Jesus said, These are the things that the Gentiles seek rather. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto thee. Amen. According to divine design, your life was not designed to be on bread. Your life was designed to be on the preceding word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I was believing God to. I was believing God to push it further, but. Let, let, let's let's see let's see what happens haliko selemrati sombara tafal fendo shele do you remember that the disciples were with jesus in the gospels and the bible said that the pharisees came and said that john the baptist has his disciples fasting and praying we the pharisees we are fasting and praying your disciples all the time we see them and they are eating Jesus said, the bridegroom, as long as the bridegroom is here, they shall not fast. But Jesus added something. He says, there cometh a time when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. Then shall they fast. <laughs> The bridegroom was taken away from us a long time ago. Anna understood this concept and was serving God with prayer and with fastings. Paul, the apostle said, we were most of the time in troublous seasons. He said, in fastings often. How much are you giving to fasting? In seeking for the proceeding word of God. Acts chapter number 13 verse 1, Bible says, in the church in Antioch, there were some men who were teachers and others who were prophets. And as they ministered Step unto the Lord, the Lord, the Holy Ghost spoke and said, Separate unto me Paul and Barnabas for a certain commission, for a certain work that I have called them unto. These men who were teachers and prophets were giving to fasting and prayer, and they were ministering unto the Lord. You have come into the field for quite a very long while. You do not even understand the concept of the fact that you are not supposed to live on bread alone, rather, you are supposed to live on the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Paul and Barnabas started going around their missionary journeys, not because they decided to sit down and plan that we want to go to this place. Rather, these were men who were in prayer and in fasting, and the Holy Ghost spoke to them, and their lives began to rise onto the ascending heights of God's purpose. I came to speak to you, somebody, that as long as you are a man, and you are in the Christian faith, and you believe in Jesus as the Son of God, you believe in his Lordship, and believe in his resurrection and you have received the life of him you have been desired and wired not to live on bread alone but the proceeding word of out of the mouth of god not the proceeding word that all the time you receive it from a prophet but a proceeding word that you receive from your fellowship with god yourself the operation of man the design of man so if you are here and all the time is all about eating 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 you are not operating as the man that god designed i remember not too long ago i wrote on my status i just wrote on my status that when you are giving to bread you are not a man according to God's definition. You are operating in the rebellion of Adam. 
whenever you are giving to bread only, it, it just tells us that the strength of Adam's rebellion has gained preeminence over your life. Because that was not how Adam was designed to live. Adam, who was supposed to be in the image of God, was designed to live on the proceeding word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, because looking at the time, we are not going to be able to push through all the operations that I want to talk about. But probably let me talk about this second one and maybe... We, we can end it here for tonight and probably continue with God willing tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the second design of God for man that I want to talk about. <laughs> Before I come out with a point, let me show you something in the book of Isaiah chapter number 66. Isaiah chapter number 66. Wherever you are, just begin to talk in tongues. If you can unmute your mic, just unmute your mic and begin to speak in tongues. Later, Luvila Tilan Koshala Brati Valaka Koshele, Caparata Sompresso Delica Cofelite, Velfele Mushale, Cali Paranta Sai, Vele Tom Plusas, Shelico Copelite Salme. If you are on the platform, I will entreat you open your microphone and begin to talk in tongues. Mecosheli Cato Prenti Salvelila. Jaka kopele ke som presto litel felila ilam pere som presto selika kopelile ingreso valama katom pelita lufalil no reso seike kopelitre tombarada ika shabata la pa reso feleke kopelite lempresete iteli fali falu valanka so presete limikalo ili para shaya kopelinge so teleme Ilaha conketelika saya, Ipa campuli palada, Ile preso seleka copelin prendestele, Ila cofelita limpala capom pilena, Incosalele miliham buluadaba, Il buluadaba, 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 cofeli seletre som pelila, Ica pompeli sala brantele beleke copelia, Jaca capalia, Irechete prentelu. Feleke copile, Ila Pantala la Palia Cacompilale, Ireshe de Brantelu Falatiasa, Conkele getoli frantoli villata, say, Ipala da Pala da Pala da Pala da Copile, Cresso delene, Ishelema Poli Sali Falito, Brondi Capu Hantala Malania, Icoche de Cocim Palie, Reshe de Bele Cocabeliate, Ifali Limihata, Manco. The Brendele Bede Cocom Pilina, Ishada da Palabrantila Cofel and Teliminatara, Irusta de Beca Copeli Lipeliata, Rapuntele Lebaca Copaliata, Iresha de Beleleke de Kelele Beledeta. Zaka kapaliata irapa da basha ya da 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 prenda sha ya da kakomilia irese da da kakapeli li fele le prenda le le prenda le le grega sha ipulia sha italam prenda sha lima kopile tele le grete sha da 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 ga le prenda sha le le prenda sha ile prenda sha da da gla tele le prenda sha pray that the Lord Himself shall take you to the realm of His preceding word in the name of Jesus that the Lord shall take you to the place of his proceeding word in the name of Jesus. Makuki Pali Asaya Iresete Fele Kumpelili Pelie Rasote Kofila Simata Ikombete Brete Soli Fampalama Ikatumpilili Paluatai Roshe Kumpilama Talie Iresu Dele Feli Kumpalala Mata Ikashadi Dilo Feli Akantolita Iresu Zetali Barato Sele Arondiso 
ofrenda compiliti la mula shalika kumbila lia ile lushaliko falidre so delika kobe ika kobe ika kobe ika kobe ika kobe ika kobe ila hasum pilen nukatu ivravi shaiku tel meleko kampalama akushaliko sabradive le kopel menile asholika tulifalama itre son selika kompelila arose kukate livre arisa su telibala ikata pranta shapalakata ipranta shapalakata ipranta shapalakata ipranta shapalakata lifeteleke kopeliata ipruntelika kompinasa ikateli faluvile so prentelime areso de kakoseli ikateli prante solilami akombi da pranta shalala la kaya ipeleko felie son pretile akosenim palio saya ikovedede 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 peliso prentele la nuche le kamboli arosete kakonte libilata ikrose de letele ila brandi shaya kofeleta ikapatele prata kofelete li prende sheleke polila ikaboli as Santa Prente Sobelita Liminalo, I convele le prende sede de de combinate, I la resubre sete lica comba la bata, a shada da cataya, a shada da cataya, a cata libre de degreso de le cacopresse, I la petelica in cateli militale, a rifelon shayan catem prendeli, I loma cosa di lelia sobelia tembelila, I tembelile, tembelile. Tembelile, 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 copilato flesse in tobique company in Haloshaya. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we, we want to pray this prayer. In the course of the day, as I waited on the Lord, my spirit picked up this perception in the spirit. And I saw drums, drums that are filled with water. Are you together? I saw drums that were filled with water or tanks that were filled with water. And I was seeing people who were picked and were placed in those tanks and the people were immersed in the water. And I came with the interpretation. I've been asking, Lord, what does this mean? But as we prayed, it came to my spirit that the Lord wants us to be immersed in a certain quantum of his very presence and grace. And we are praying and we are telling God that God, send us to the place of the deep. Immerse us in your very grace. Immerse us in your very presence. In the name of the Lord Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. Fel peluche le copone, a brente su sal che compie lila, i soli cattu fil felila pronti sal meno, soli copilante lite, i drendu scelle canto li vilabra di salama, caltombre se te le me confe li di halo se. Hey, somebody, complicate li felumbaradi, are so se luca campelila, incapandu fel felile sombredile combila, ille que sutelige du gital menege. Pray that the Lord will immerse you in a great quantum of his grace. Great grace was upon them. I que le compelili matasaya, i fel felu shelica copilena, prondicize, 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 prondicize. Size Ukali Telu Flenfeni, Mendulito Shalila Telilo, Ura Sai Saya, Ura Sai Saya, Ura Sai Saya, Mekushelika Tompelila, Ivele to Mele, Ivele to Mele, Mulika Kushel Menutalama, Ikelon Kelua Shai Belite, Are Suzali Brati Sulabatakaba, Ikalum Pelenimina Sovre de Setelema. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are still teaching. We are still teaching. Just, just follow me. We are still on the teaching. We are still on the teaching. Wherever the Lord leads, we are going to go. Now, the second thing I want to talk about, 
according to the design and the operation of man, was that man was designed to be a dwelling. Are we together? Yes. Man was designed to be a dwelling. That is why I said, let us look at the book of Isaiah chapter number 66. Verse 1 and 2 is where we are going to look. Isaiah 66 verse 1 and 2 says, Thou sayest to the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Watch the next statement that comes. It says, Where is the house that he built unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Now God is saying, where is the house you will build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? Watch the verse 2. For all those things, what are those things? The heaven which he said is his throne, and the earth which he says is his footstool. He says, for all those heavens and earth have my hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man, so you see, God is saying that of the heavens and the earth that I created, they were works of my hand. How be it I am looking for a rest. I am looking for a house. And I am looking to this man, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. So God is saying that he is looking for a place of rest and that place that qualifies to be the place of his rest is that man who has a poor and a contrite spirit and that man who trembled at his word. I came to tell you that Adam in the garden did not tremble at the word of the Lord. If he had trembled at the word of the Lord, he would have obeyed the word of the Lord. But glory be to God that there was a another man who came who trembled at the word of the Lord. The book of Hebrews chapter number 10 Bible talks about verse 5 down where Bible talks about the fact that he said I have come in the volume of the books to do thy will O God. A body has thou prepared me and he was speaking from the book of Psalms chapter number 40 he talks about the fact that God had prepared him a body that was speaking concerning Jesus. So God, all this while, has been looking for a resting place. God, all this while, has been looking for a house. And he knew that the heavens and the heavens of heavens could not contain him. And the earth could not contain him. But he designed a certain product called a man. And that man's spirit has the ability to contain the eternal God. Has the ability to contain the greater one. Has the ability to contain the Elohim has the ability to contain the El Shaddai, has the ability to contain the Rafa. I came to tell you that according to God's design, he designed that you will be a place of his dwelling. And God is a spirit, so he designed that man will be a dwelling for his spirit. Hallelujah. That is why you read scriptures like First Corinthians chapter number three, verse sixteen, which talks about the fact that your body is the temple of the Lord, and the Lord dwells in you by His Spirit. And let me show you why the Let me show you the reason why Jesus had to cast out devils. You see. The reason why Jesus had to cast out devils was not basically about the demonstration of his power and his authority. But Jesus had to cast out devils to demonstrate how God designed man to be. God designed man to be a dwelling of spirit, but not of evil spirit. Are, are we together? God designed man to be a dwelling of spirits, but not evil spirit. 
So when evil spirits are dwelling in a man, when evil spirits possess a man, it is a trespass of divine design. I say it again. When evil spirits dwell in dwell a man, it is a trespass of divine design. Because according to God's design, man was designed to be the rest of God. And who is God? God is a spirit. And he dwelleth in man by his spirit. But you see, because of the fall, man became vulnerable to entertaining spirits that are not of God. Are we together? Because of the rebellion and the disobedience of Adam, man could attract evil spirits. So Jesus came and Bible said in the book of Luke, book of Luke, chapter number four. Let me show you something there. We, we, we are about to draw the curtains down. Now. Luke chapter number four, verse 33 to 35. Bible says, and in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of unclean devil. The man had a spirit of an unclean devil. This man had become a habitation and a dwelling for a spirit, but that spirit was unclean. And cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Verse 35. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Because Jesus was teaching us that according to God's design, you listening to me, you were designed to be the dwelling and habitation of spirit, but not of evil spirit. So the casting out of devils we see Jesus do was to establish God's design of man as a dwelling for the spirit of God and not as a dwelling for evil spirit. That is the essence of go ye into the world, heal the sick, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall cast out devils because they will be establishing the design of God for man, that man will be a dwelling not of evil spirit, but dwelling of the spirit of God. And I came to speak to you as you are listening to me right now. If there is anybody in your life that has been possessed by an evil spirit, we send forth the word of God wherever they are around the globe, in your house, wherever they find themselves right now, on their beds, walking in the street, at church services, wherever they are. We send forth the word of God and the power of God to displace any form of evil spirit that dwells within their body. We set them apart unto the design of God for them as a man in the name of the Lord Jesus. That is why we read in the book of Luke chapter number 11 verse 24 to 26. You will see the same account in Matthew chapter number 12 verse 43 to 45. Matthew chapter number 12, verse 43 to 45. Luke chapter number 11, verse 24 to 26. It talks about the account of that man. There was this man. And Jesus was giving up. <laughs> Jesus said, when an evil spirit leaves a man, it goes to wander about, and if he has no place to dwell, it tells itself that let me go back to my house. The word house there is oikos. Oikos means a dwelling. Let me go back to my former dwelling. And when he comes and sees the place swept and garnished and that place is not filled, he goes in search of other spirits that are more wicked than him. And they come to indwell that man. And the state of that man becomes worse than the former state. Because even evil spirits know that man was designed as a dwelling for the spirit of God. But the disobedience of Adam made man vulnerable to be inhabited by other spirits that are not of God. But as you are listening to me, I came to tell you that God has designed that you as a man will be his habitation. You will be his habitat. You will be his dwelling. If you, you see, there is nothing of God expressing himself in you, then I need you to begin to question whether you are truly, truly saved because your body as a man, you as a man, being a spirit, soul, and body has been designed to operate as an embodiment of the spirit of God. 
No wonder the Bible talks about the fact that do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Kaliko Shelemate. So if you are someone who is not filled with the Holy Ghost and you are filled with any other thing that you can think of that is not God, then it means you are not living according to the design and the operation of man as defined by God. Because God was looking for a rest. God was looking for a house. And he said that I am looking for that man who has a poor and a contrite spirit. And that man who trembles at my word. Now we are listening to this very prayer. Wherever you are, I want you to unmute your mic. We are praying and we are telling God that God, we have come unto thee. We have come unto thee. We have come unto thee. We are seeking that you will come into us fully, that you would express yourself in us fully. We have come as men of a poor spirit and of a contrite spirit. Bible said, blessed are they that are poor in spirit for the Lord himself, for the Lord himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Said they are the poor in spirit for this is the kingdom of God. Wherever you are, I want you to omit your mic and begin to pray that God, I am here, your dwelling. I am here, your dwelling. I am here, your dwelling. Fill me, fill me, fill me. Be filled with the spirit. Be filled with your spirit. Wherever you are, open your mouth and begin to pray. Shaliko Palinda Bala. Sali Kovali so Brente Sele Mille Kombi La Telila Ile so Zetumba la Batili Makosene Isa de Dele Liasaya Igreso se Felitali Prondi Shabako Pileteli Telome Ire sa Sombi la Batai Covete le Melike Songre so Zelita Ila Bada Brandi Shata Copilene Meledule Jaca Capalita Jaca Capalita Jaca Capalita Jaka Kapalita, Rende Shele, Brandi Shade Cobedile, Ipada da Dabaco, Sede Brete, Sede de Belede, Ica da de Bele de Brenda, Sede Bele Telebeleke, Refe Teleme Cocosina Labada, Italy Telemrandi Loma, Cosede Cosabileto, Brente Satelima, Icosa delete, Icosa delete, Icosa delete, Icosa delete, Brete Sumbele de Capa, Ipresse Telepala, Rand. The Santa Baca, Pondele Betelli Fele de Compeli Liba, Arresa de Branta Saya Blandala, Capata Branda Santa Palili Villa, Ica Sabada Bada Bata, Ica Sabada Bada Bata, Ica Sabada Bada Bata, Resa de Felele Micatoli, Branteli Malala, Azaka Palia, Ico Sabata la Prasata, Ila Brandi Sele Comilele, Ila Falete, Ila Falene, Bronte Setele Mecope, Ira. Sabada bada bada la, ira bada bada bala pa, resha baka kapalia, ipala di vile me nombre setelete kapalia, ira sata kapa, ipante ni di fele le bada ba, pre 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 pre, shabaka tala, shaka kata, ipa sada da bala data, ikapala la bala la la ta, because the Lord has called us to be a dwelling, ikashala data, according to our design, we were designed to be a dwelling of the spirit of God in the name of the Lord Jesus we are designed to live on the preceding word we pray in the name of Jesus we come on to you that give us grace that you will recognize our poverty in the spirit give us grace oh Lord that you will come on to be with the poor and the contrite spirit and we will tremble at thy word 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 in the name of Jesus, we will tremble at thy word. Ikusala matali vele kopolia. Asada dabata. Ire 
Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of Isaiah chapter number 66, verse 1 that we read, we realized that God was looking for a rest. God was looking for a house. He was looking for a rest. Now, you see, we all know that in Christ, we are the temple of the Lord. But the question is, is God at a rest in your temple? Is God at a rest in your house? According to design and the operation of man, man was to operate as the rest of God. So you see, there are men that God is at a rest in their members. There are others too. God is in them all right, but he is not at rest. It means these men are not living according to the design and the operation of man as God intended it to be. You are letting this very prayer unto God and you are telling God that God, I avail myself to give rest to you even in me. I avail myself to give rest to you in my house. I avail myself to give rest to you in my members. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. It that you have rest in me that you have rest in me that I will be a man that will give you rest in the name of Jesus that your son shall give you rest in us in the name of the Lord Jesus Capolini Mate, I resolve the leke compelli. Tila prasaya areso telama konketomi isha de 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 ketele meleno iraso vala da branda shaya da katami isalila mosaya katofelitre itaya pantele melike rasha bada 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 bata la irasha da 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 bata irasha da 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 bata irasha da 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 bata ikapada da branda la la branda la la branda la la pa ikapada bala da sha a comila pale, a comila pale, a comila pale, a comila pale, receve telica combele telila, a rose zenica gumpininate, if ali felie, if ali felie, if ali felie, if ali felie, rasata palata, e cadada granda saya, pay that you be the rest of God, e catomilatai, God is in your view, God is in your body, but are you giving him 
rest. God is in you. Are you giving me rest? You are designed to be the rest of God. You are designed to be the dwelling of His Spirit. A committale rashede kaponti lamata are so zetoli kato medela isa de tebelie are felele kompeni nimitaya ila peso telepe kato yanti nimina so delia itali fendi lamata dia in the name of Jesus. Katila feletela. We are praying this very prayer. We are praying this very prayer. We are sending the word of God. If there is anyone you know who is under the torments of the evil one, if there is anybody you know who is being oppressed by any spirit, any spirit of witchcraft, any spirit of divination, any spirit of sorcery, any spirit of immorality. We are declaring the word of God right now. We are sending forth the word that the word of God will displace them because man, according to the design of God, was designed to be the rest of God and not any other spirit. That is the essence of the grace to cast out devils. We are praying in the name of the Lord Jesus right now that we are displaced Spelling every spirit from the life of anybody you know, from your families, any spirit that has gained mastery in that very home, in a business, any spirit that has gained mastery in the workplace, any spirit that has gained mastery, we are declaring that may God himself walk through our families, may God himself walk through our workplaces in the ministry that we belong to, may God himself walk through those ministries and purge those ministries of these evil influences in the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray i reso de ke kopeli tala a ri sombre teli vele kopeli rasa sali rasa sali rasa sali rasa sali kopan katel menove i rose teli palata sa ye kopele le menita doshe Abada bada, kabada bada, kabada bada, kabada bada. Ilevre so seleke kopele ni mileteli. Are so degrede se degrede shelele meleke. Ile brende se delele peliete. Ile selele brende se tele meleko kaba. Ile brende sha ya bada bada ta. Ile brende se dede ke kele melele bele. Are sha bada baka. Are sha bada baka. I brende lele feleli mi la. Ali Bushaya Compele le Brandesha, I Catele Brandesha de Kelepele, Ali Brandesha le Brandesha Bada, I Cabada 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 Bada, La Brandesha le Pelili Milala, I Cosha Patala, Ari Telemele Cofeli Telibe, I Le Rasso Selimata, I Lambrendo Secomila Tile, A Combila. Tatabeto, Rofeteli Val Femino, Ushabala Kakami, Jamprendi Sotele Melekeke. In your family, we declare in its spirit that I've gained preeminence in the family. He has gained mastery over the family. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, according to the judicial order of Christ, who is our mediator. And before God, the judge of all, we pray that the Lord rebuke every spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord rebuke every spirit in the name of Jesus. The Lord rebuke every spirit in the name of Jesus. That the spirit of God will be enthroned in our families, in our workplace, in the ministry, in marriages, in the name of Jesus, in every endeavor of our life, in the workings of our hand, the spirit of God will gain preeminence. Katolita Rasaya, ikatelele bote na taya, reya subila telinkre sotele mena vendelu basaya. In the name of Jesus, shako feli tali, prento sene ne mena hasha. Katila la ba dilo shele, ikrento seze vil. Rasaya. Katabali to selegresto telelema. Ampara nyami nui. Ampara nyami.
Ami Nui O Enuti Amu Mayafanasi Manu Ampara Nyami Nui Ampara Nyami Nui Ali Mando Shilema Ampara Nyami Nui Alleluia Enunti Mouma Fanasi Nasi Manu Ampara Nyami Nui Alleluia Enunti Shalima Kote Lama Lima Do Fele Mata Ibu Dasu Ampara Shekoma Katele Mada Nami Nui Uwe Nunti Mumai Enfanasi Nasi Manu Ampara Nami Shakopila Nita Eternal one, we bless you, we give you praise, we give you adoration. You are the one who has the clouds as the dust of thy feet. The radiance of thy throne, no man can look into it. You dwell in an unapproachable light and you alone has immortality. Whom no one has seen or can see. We give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. We thank you that for tonight you have unveiled to us two designs and operations of the man that you intended to create. That man would live and will be kept by the word that proceeds out of thy mouth and not on bread. That that man would also be your rest and not the rest of evil and unclean spirit. We thank you that you have brought us to the place of understanding that the poor and the contrite spirit, you the Lord will not despise. And men who tremble at thy word, they are the ones you have designed to operate according to your divine intent. We thank you for tonight that you have given us light. And we know that you are going to make it glorious, God willing, tomorrow. You will take us on height that even our minds cannot fathom. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name, and let all the saints shout a very big amen. 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 It is good to be here once again. Thank you for making time to be here. I know it is not easy for you to stay up at night it is not easy, but thank you so much that you have decided to discipline yourself and to be a part. Because what you are doing right now, according to the teachings that the Lord is giving to us, you didn't realize that what you are doing right now is according to divine design and the operation of man. That man is designed for this. And you look at that God willing tomorrow. I don't know if God will be giving us a go-ahead to continue tomorrow or to delve into something else. But whatever be the case, we know that the Lord is going to minister to us, God willing. Thank you so much for making time to be here, go through the hectic times, the network issues, and still you are here. God mightily bless you. And forgive me all the time I go beyond the time, and you are so charitable to forgive my sins and remember them. No more. Doc, once again, I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much. And over to you, sir. Oh, hallelujah. 
we, we bless God for another night. It's been an awesome night. Despite the network challenges and difficulties, we've been able to prevail. And uh, I'm glad we have this series live streamed on YouTube. I was telling the man of God yesterday. I've I go I've made it a habit of going back to the recording and listening to it over again because there are things that you may not the scriptures follow it read it again study it for yourself you you begin to have an intimacy with the word I will entreat you that you share the YouTube link to with people those who are not able to join just send it to them to follow the link and start from the first day or the first night of this program and listen to how the teachings has gone. I believe these are the very foundations of the Christian faith and if we get it right, we are going to prevail upon everything that rises up against, especially in the times we live in and the challenges and enormous difficulties that we encounter on the daily basis. On the daily basis, sorry. God bless you so much for joining us once again. We, like you said, we've gone over the time and you've been so lenient with us. We pray that over the next two, three days that we have left to dissect the word of God, Friday is going to be a half night service from 12 a.m. to 5 a.m., which is going to be a midnight encounter. I want you to prepare yourself as you're getting closer. God is about to do a new thing and it's already started. And I'm entreating you once again, find time to go on YouTube, go to the YouTube page and start listening to the messages all over again. And God is going to be a blessing to you. God bless you so much for tonight and have a very good night. Amen. God bless you too. you